Mohamed Yunis Memphi, president of the Presidential Council of the State of Libya. At the outset of my intervention, I would like to address on, on my behalf and behalf of my delegation um, my congratulations to Mr. Karossi for his election to the 77th session of the General Assembly. I wish him every success in his term. I also thank Mr. Abdullah Shahid for his tireless work and the invaluable contribution he made during his presidency of the previous session of the General Assembly. I also would like to applaud the uh, continuing efforts of Mr. Antonio Guterres, who leads our organization with wisdom and balance in these uh, difficult uh, circumstances uh, around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my country, Libya, which I have the honor of serving and representing, is uh, going through a decade of both suffering and hope. Libya is still trying to build uh, its, its state institutions and uh, uh, consolidate the principles of democracy. The Libyan people have demonstrated to the entire world that they represent a, a unified uh, uh, a unified nation in spite of the challenges the Libyan people thanks to its uh, uh, clairvoyance tolerance and and patriotism continue to work for a un united country they give us the determination and hope to keep moving forward to realize their aspirations to build uh, a state uh, our state and pave the way for stability and prosperity ladies and gentlemen the events of today certainly uh, recall the past. The Army of Lib Libyan Liberation, which was created before the creation of the Libyan state, uh, fought uh, alongside uh, the armies of the world, uh, um, of the free world. After the defeat of fascism, Libya does, uh, uh, earned its independence. Our independence was born uh, as a result of our uh, national combat and. Uh, uh, this made it possible for our founding fathers to build our country and uh, to uh, launch our trajectory of pr of uh, prosperity and development, which in a record time made uh, Libya a model of uh, development. Ladies and gentlemen, a s today, of course, uh, the situation is very different individual interests of different countries involved in the in the Libyan uh, situation as well as proxy wars and diverging views on how to solve the situation in Libya have not given us an opportunity to develop our own national uh, path in the very negative international interventions offer contradictory solutions which uh, push my country towards armed confrontation which do not spare innocent people and which lead to intransigent political positions uh, which do not accept uh, uh, any concessions uh, uh, and any middle ground. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the Libyan Presidential Council is attached to its role as indicated in the Libyan political agreement. As uh, the supreme political authority, this council represents national and international unity of the country and fulfills the function of the uh, uh, commander-in-chief of the army is also responsible for leading the efforts of national reconciliation that is inclusive to pave the way towards a democratic and peaceful transition through parliamentary and presidential elections at the same time I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the African Union for having cooperated with us in order to launch the project of national reconciliation. This project represents the most important pillar to support our trajectory that would lead to peace and stability they were hoping for. These responsibilities force us to work uh, in the framework of, of an impartial and balanced uh, 
national efforts, in spite of uh, the attempts by certain political parties to push us towards political confrontation, that we are trying to avoid uh, by every possible means. We are trying to resolve these political uh, uh, disputes. The Presidential Council has closely followed the series of dialogues between the Parliament and the Council of State. These rounds of dialogue have still not led to a, an agreement on the constitutional rules to be followed for the parliamentary and presidential elections. The Presidential Council continues to stress that these rounds of dialogue should not continue uh, indefinitely. The Presidential Council is ready to intervene to uh, to uh, have the political process, uh, if necessary, uh, to overcome the impasse in the political process, if necessary. Uh, at the economic level, the Presidential Council has supported all efforts that have made it possible to restore the production of gas and oil in all Libyan regions. This certainly uh, is in line with the national interests and supports stability uh, on international markets that have been under severe pressure, especially uh, uh, in countries that are major consumers of energy. Furthermore, based on our uh, balanced position, the, pres the Libyan Presidential Council is attached to a transparent and fair management of our oil revenue, which belongs to all Libyans. The goal is to... Uh, have public funds not be a source of uh, uh, of conflict and for them to uh, benefit all Libyans in every corner of the country without uh, geographical, political, or other distinctions. If we manage to achieve this goal, it will uh, it will reduce the current conflict uh, uh, for power and create a climate that is favorable for trend uh, for uh, our our democratic transition. Mr. President, my country considers the role of the United Nations in a positive light, in spite of the uh, slower rate of that intervention recently. We still expect an active role of the United Nations through the new leadership of our UN mission in our country. We call on uh, the continuation of uh, the mission in favor of national inclusive reconciliation that will allow us to overcome the current impasse. This impasse has op opened the way for uh, individual initiatives uh, that uh, risk undermining all the political progress achieved thanks to uh, the political dialogue uh, under the auspices of the United Nations. I also call for a new momentum uh, in our economic development. One of the three trajectories of the Berlin Conference, which was neglected as far as we're concerned, there is transparency and justice in management of oil resources, financial control and public expenditure, and combating against corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, the world today is on the threshold of a new international order, an order which reminds us of the, the suffering of humankind at the beginning of the 20th century. And while we thought that the errors of the past would never be repeated again, today, now, it, it, it's time for human conscience to, to speak out in favor of peace and that the world, the entire world supports the international principles enshrined in the United Nations to uphold the principle of sovereignty of states and to resolve conflicts by peaceful means and to respect uh, good neighborly relations and not destabilize the uh, uh, security of nations. I also call on the respect for the right of people to use nuclear energy for peaceful purposes in conformity uh, with the criteria defined by the A I A E A. Furthermore, my country is on the front lines of the uh, uh, combat against terrorism, and I call on a renewed unity in fighting terrorism. Terrorism still represents a threat to all uh, countries of the world. This threat does not spare any race, any religion, any civilization. My country, 
has fulfilled all its uh, responsibilities at the international level to uh, strike at the sources of financing of terrorism. And from this tribune, I would like to reiterate the commitment of my country to support the right of the Palestinian people to create uh, their own state and to stop the settlement, settlements and uh, attacks against it. And we call on the upholding international resolutions on this point. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, this month the Libyan people uh, are observing a minute of silence during the Day of the Martyr, a day that coincides with the assassination of our national hero in the anti-colonial fight, Omar al-Mukhtar. The Libyan people are inspired by the combat of its ancestors to learn patience and to be more determined in defending its rights. The Libyan people uh, draw inspiration from its uh, founding fathers to become more tolerant. The current period will be enshrined in the national memory. Future generations will see will recognize the positions of those who supported us and those who uh, uh, undermined our security, who, who who pillaged our richness, our wealth. Libya, due to its uh, Arab uh, neighborhood, due to its position in Africa, is a is a link between civilizations and uh, as an economic hub where the interests of the world uh, 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 are concentrated and. Uh, uh, the damage that we've experienced have not only affected the uh, uh, Libyan people, but have also affected uh, the region and our international relations. Thank you very much. We were listening to the statements of Mohamed Yunis Memphi, the president of the Presidential Council of the State of Libya. Yunis called 